This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, a very good morning. So we have uh, mycology specimens today. As we discussed in our last class about uh, parasitology specimens, you will be given uh, certain specimens as uh, spotters or uh, you will be given them in uh, your viva examinations. You have to first identify them and then once you identify, you have to uh, further discuss about uh, all these uh, later on. Okay. So uh, first of all, we'll see a video because today we have Candida. Uh, I hope you remember that you have seen Candida in your uh, uh, theory uh, classes. Also, we have discussed about Candida. So uh, we'll see a short video and then uh, we'll start the uh, classes about Mycology specimens. We have Candida and Aspergillus, three species. So, first we'll discuss about Candida. Candidites is caused by fungal pathogens from the Candida genus. Most infection caused by Candida albicans, a type of fungus that grows both as a yeast and filament to cells. The ubiquitous fungi represent one of the most common fungal pathogens to affect the human population. The fungi are the fungal agents mechanistic oral and genital infections in humans. In addition, systemic fungal infections due to candida albicans represents an important cause of morbidity and mortality in immunocompromised patients. Hospital-acquired infections and biofilms from the fungi on the surface of medical devices represent significant threats to human health. Invasive candidiasis is a type of fungal infection that occurs when candida enter the blood, causing bloodstream infections and then spreading throughout the body. One form of invasive candidiasis is the fourth most common bloodstream infection among hospitalized patients in the United States. The symptoms of invasive candidiasis are nonspecific. Fever and chills that do not improve after antibiotic therapy are the most common symptoms. The infection spreads to deep organs such as the kidney, liver, bones, muscles, joints, spleen, or eyes. Additional specific symptoms may develop, which vary depending on the site of infection. If the infection does not respond to treatment, the patient's organs may fail, result in death. Invasive candidiasis. It's extremely rare in persons without risk factors. In persons at risk, invasive candidiasis may result when a person's own candida organisms normally found in the digestive tract into the bloodstream. On occasion, it can also occur when medical equipment or devices become contaminated with candida. In either case, the infection may spread throughout the body. These are just a few things to know about candida albicans and candidiasis. To learn more about environmental infectious disease testing services, Okay, so uh, we'll see the slides in which uh, certain tubes of subroth dextrose agar will be shown to you. So I hope that uh, once you come here, you'll be able to identify them. It's very easy, in fact. Uh, so uh, we'll see about uh, mycology specimens, which basically includes uh, Candida species. And we have Aspergillus fumigatus, Clavus, and Nica. So uh, we have discussed this in the previous classes that uh, basically uh, fungi are either yeasts or molds. And uh, yeasts can be either uh, like yeast-like fungi like Candida, or they can be true yeasts like Cryptococcus, or they can be molds in which, uh, as we discussed, there will be hyphae which may be aseptate or septate hyphae. So septa, I hope you remember that uh, these are wall-like things in the uh, hyphae. So aseptate or sparsely septate, that is very less septa will be there in certain uh, uh, fungi like zygomycetes. And there will be septate hyphae like uh, in the dimorphic uh, fungi. As you remember, dimorphism is a feature of certain uh, fungi like histoplasma, like blastomyces, coccidioides, and pedicillium. With dimorphic means they will be uh, either uh, yeasts or molds, and that will be at different temperatures. Yeasts, uh, the, the structure is usually seen at 37 degrees, that is the body uh, temperature, whereas at room temperature, that is about 24 to 25 degrees Celsius, they will be uh, presented as hyphae. So, dimorphic uh, fungi and there will be opportunistic 
uh, fungi like aspergillus or fusarium and then there are dermatophytes like uh, you have discussed about trichophyton, microsporon and epidermophyton. So these are uh, infections of the skin, hair and nails. So these are just examples uh, that uh, names have been kept here. So in entire mycology, there are uh, many different uh, types of fungi like the yeasts and the hyphal cell types that we have discussed previously. So they can, uh, yeasts basically they uh, uh, multiply by budding Whereas uh, from the hyphae, they, they can have either uh, asexual or sexual development. So asexual development, like we have discussed in aspergillus classes, you might remember they, they have uh, gonadia, so which uh, develop on the uh, surface of phyllites, so on the surface of vesicles, and there is a, a structure uh, on which these uh, gonadiophores, on which these uh, the, uh, asexual developments take place. So then there are different types of sexual developments also, which is known as the true state of the fungi. So basically dimorphic fungi can be many, that is uh, blastomyces, coccidioides, and histoplasma. So uh, uh, coccidioides, histoplasma, etc. So these uh, are uh, different at different temperatures, that is they have a structure of uh, molds at 25 degrees Celsius, whereas they appear as yeasts at 37 degrees Celsius. So as you might remember, Cryptococcus neocommons is a true yeast and it has a large polysaccharide capsule and it divides by budding. So why Candida is known as a yeast-like fungus? Because it has a parent yeast cell that basically has budding. But what happens is sometimes these buds or they grow into larger or longer forms which appear like hyphae which 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 are then known as pseudo hyphae so uh, then you might remember about a uh, true uh, uh, the uh, true hyphae that is uh, possessed by aspergillus and fusarium and others which we have discussed in previous classes okay so uh, now we have uh, uh, candida uh, which uh, will be given to you in a tube of Sabrots dextrose agar, uh, which belongs to the family Saccharomyces and a phylum Mycota and has approximately 200 species or more and uh, more, about 20 are associated with pathology in humans and animals. And uh, this is a ubiquitous yeast which is found on many plants. It is a normal flora of the gastrointestinal tract of mammals and mucocutaneous membranes of humans and they are present in all areas of the human GI tract and there are many common species also like uh, uh, Candida albicans, Tropicalis, Parapsilosis and uh, Glabrata etc. As was discussed in the video these are basically opportunistic organisms so suppose a patient is on a hospital stay and he is taking uh, antibiotics so he is taking for a long time that indicates that the normal flora will be destroyed and once the normal bacterial flora which are actually protective for us once they are reduced these uh, organisms uh, these candida they will grow and uh, they will they can spread from many uh, to many uh, parts and then they can cause disease so uh, these are basically uh, opportunistic diseases which are caused by candida so you can remember in patients with hiv in patients who have had transplant, who are on steroids. So these are very common. So these are the major uh, pathogenic species that is albicans, glabrata, cruzae, kefir, gullermondi, parapsilopsis, uh, tropicalis, etc. So this is the basic morphology. I hope you remember you have seen in uh, your uh, uh, gram stain and uh, uh, slides that we have shown you. So uh, here what uh, is there is basically these are yeast-like cells and these yeast-like cells will have uh, something which is known as a pseudo -hypha. So pseudo is nothing but it is basically a bud which elongates. So it will elongate and then further it will uh, uh, it will develop into uh, uh, hyphal-like structures but these are not true hyphae, these are pseudo -hyphae. So there will be chlamydospore formation also if you uh, culture them on cornmeal agar, so there will be some structures which are basically resistant and uh, very tough structures. These are known as chlamydospores. So these are the different uh, structures of uh, candida 
albicans, tropicalis, rosei, etc. So uh, this is the uh, uh, morphology that is on glucose peptone agar. Uh, after three days, uh, there is uh, about a colony about uh, two to three millimeters diameter, white to cream color. You can remember Colgate paste, the original classic Colgate paste, how it will look, it will be white, it will be creamy, it will be pasty. So exactly like that it will look. It will be smooth or ambonate and uh, may become wrinkled on further incubation on dull due to glistening or uh, on cornmeal agar there will be interspecies variation but exactly the uh, uh, colonies will look like this. It is like a, a, a smooth glistening pasty uh, colonies creamy that you can see. So once you see these, you can identify very quickly. It is uh, not at all confusing. So once you see that on subrod agar, and how will you recognize that? Because it is in a large test tube on a slant. So that is subrod agar, which is used, used for uh, fungal uh, culture. And then uh, we have these uh, creamy, glistening, pasty colonies, uh, whitish to creamy in color. So you can recognize them very uh, easily. So you can see these colonies are very, very easy to recognize. These are candida colonies. So once you uh, put them on uh, lactophenol, cotton blue, or you can put them on a, a KOH mount, you can see that uh, these uh, uh, candida, uh, these are yeast-like cells which are budding. So budding yeast-like cells which have a so, sort of formation of pseudo hyphae on a little uh, bit of prolongation. You can see that they can have pseudo hyphae this here what you exactly see in this picture these are germ tubes so you might remember in your candida classes also you were taught that once you incubate uh, candida colonies with a plasma some species like candida albicans they will have this germ tube formation so these are known as germ tubes okay so uh, candida albicans uh, on uh, three days of incubation on cornmeal agar can form uh, uh, pseudo hyphae and they can form a uh, chlamydospore formation also. So these are uh, chlamydospores. Just remember very tough uh, uh, double wall like structures will be seen. So those are known as chlamydospores. So uh, on incubation for two hours at uh, uh, 37 degrees Celsius with 10% uh, serum, uh, you can find that uh, there are elongations which are known as germ tubes. So uh, what is the epidemiology already we have discussed their major uh, uh, places where they are present is the gastrointestinal tract and they can invade into the bloodstream and uh, they can be endogenous or exogenous sources of infection. Once uh, they can be there primarily somewhere uh, they can uh, spread hematogenously to various organs they are endogenous infections and exogenously through medical devices or catheters suppose we do not take enough sterilization measures then uh, they can uh, be important in the development of deep-seated and systematic infections. So uh, subacute, acute and uh, chronic or episodic infections can be there. So uh, the uh, superficial manifestations like skin, nails, mucosal surfaces to deep infections can be there. So mucocutaneous and deep-seated infections are there. So cutaneous, nail infections, mucosal infections, these are basically components of mucocutaneous candidiasis. So like examples just I'm giving you because uh, candida theory class is already over. Uh, so uh, just uh, candidal intertrigo, that is intertrigonous uh, candidiasis is the most common form in the skin folds. So basically people who uh, you might have seen, they will be immersing their hands in soap or water and uh, uh, suppose some people like they will be having uh, uh, work like cleaning utensils and all. Once the normal bacterial flora which are there on the skin, once they are uh, breached, so what will happen is uh, these organisms uh, like candida, they will uh, cause this uh, candidal intertrigo. So chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis is also there uh, due to candida albicans and uh, persistent lesions from early childhood persist almost uh, throughout the individual's lifetime. So, uh, warty lesions can also be there, known as candidal granulum. So, nail infections you might have seen some people, uh, in the nail bed also, uh, they might have uh, paronychia, that is nail folds, or onychia, that is infection of nails. The affected nails will become discolored, eroded, and brittle. So, oral infections, vaginal candidiasis, so all of them uh, constitute mucosal infections. And mucosal candidiasis is a very common manifestation of uh, once a patient uh, comes down with uh, AIDS 
from HIV. So that person can have uh, uh, oral or uh, uh, candidiasis of the mouth. So deep-seated candidiasis examples are like in the uh, gastrointestinal tract like esophagitis and 10 to 30 percent of AIDS patients with oral candidiasis can also have a uh, candidial uh, infection of the esophagus. So uh, here we can see the chlamydospores very clearly. I hope you remember these pictures and that is why so many pictures have been kept. So uh, factors which predispose to candida infections, uh, you already know them like mechanical factors like trauma, local occlusion or moisture, maceration or nutritional factors like iron deficiency, general malnutrition, physiologic alterations like extremes of age, pregnancy and uh, uh, systematic illnesses like Down syndrome or iatrogenic causes like uh, medications or intravenous lines, etc. So how to be diagnosed in the laboratory? Wherever they are, we have to collect the sample that way. So if uh, skin, nail or mucosal surface swabs are sent directly, we can uh, see the fungus and then we can isolate the fungus and put uh, them for identification. So this is the tube that we have in our laboratory. So you can see uh, the typical uh, creamy pasty colonies exactly uh, like a Colgate paste they will look they'll be glistening and smooth so you can uh, identify them very easily so this is a huge tube actually this is not like a test tube this is actually a larger tube in which a slant of subrods dextrose agar is given on which a candida species has been inoculated so I hope you will be able to recognize once you come here so this is candida species so wet mount we can do that is uh, 10 to 30 percent of what potassium hydroxide we can put and then uh, demonstration is easier with uh, the use of calcofluor white which is a, a fluorochrome or gram staining i hope you remember uh, i think we have shown you gram stain also in which candida was there so i hope you'll be able to recognize so uh, then uh, mucosal infections that is uh, vaginal or oral swabs are taken and wet mounts are taken or fixed mounts are taken in which we are able to recognize. So uh, we can see the uh, presence of uh, the pseudohyphae. We can see the uh, pseudohyphae in the budding yeast-like cells, which is indicative of infection. So uh, on uh, isolation, uh, routine medium, which is uh, subrods dextrose agar, which is uh, supplemented with antibiotics and uh, cyclohexamide to uh, prevent the airborne molds. And then we incubate it at uh, 37 degrees Celsius for two to three days. And then we can observe the growth. So uh, smooth appearance uh, on chrome agar. One typical thing you can write down for your theory questions also or viva examinations also. This is a typical uh, agar which is used for the identification of candida. That is chrome agar candida that is uh, usually used to differentiate between the, the different species of candida and that is with the help of different chromogenic substrates and uh, the on chrome agar we can directly differentiate between the different species so one species will appear pink one species will appear blue like that so it is very easy to identify on chrome agar so here you can see on chrome agar candida different uh, colors of candida species will appear so the uh, aspergillus species we have discussed in uh, previous classes also. So as I told you uh, in the previous classes, only uh, three species are important for your examinations. That is uh, Flavus, Fumigatus and Niger. With the help of their colors itself, you can distinguish between the uh, different uh, species of aspergillus. And uh, there is a wide uh, spectrum of aspergillus disease as we have discussed in previous classes like allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, and uh, the, uh, this is how it will look on lactophenol uh, cotton blue mount. So there will be the phialites on which the conidia will be there and that will be there on the top of a vesicle. And this is the conidiophore which will arise from a T-shaped like uh, structure from a foot cell. It will arise. So uh, this also uh, belongs to the phylum Ascomycota order Eurotiales and uh, this uh, is a filamentous ubiquitous fungus and commonly isolated from soil plant debris and indoor air environments and uh, different uh, species have been producing different diseases and opportunistic infections basically in man and uh, fumigators flavus and niger are the three common species that you need to remember and answer 
so these are differentiated on the difference of their uh, colony characters at once you can recognize them uh, flavus as i told you in the previous class flabby always indicates a yellowish color so this is basic, basically a yellowish green color so yellowish green color whereas aspergillus niger niger always means black so this is niger whereas fumigatus fumes that means smoke fumes from that you can remember it is a smoky green color okay I'll show you the few so that you can remember easily. So these are very rapidly growing and they have an aerial hyphae which have conidia that we have discussed, long conidiophores with long terminal vesicles on which the pialides produce bifactor chain of conidia. So this is how it will appear. So uh, uh, this is on a lactophenol cotton blue mount. So these are the uh, pialides on which the conidia will be there. And then there is the vesicle so once the vesicle is there on the top of the conidiophore, you can easily recognize it to be aspergillus. So this is how it will appear. So some of the species, they will totally cover the vesicle, whereas some of them will grow only uh, 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 upwards and not totally cover uh, the vesicle. So there are more than 200 species of aspergillus growing on decaying vegetables, on uh, fatty media, starchy media, and preserved foods and rotting oranges and other fruits. They can also produce toxins in mycotoxicosis also, we have discussed that. So the different uh, patches also on moist bread, you might have seen at home. So a uh, conidial stage usually we see, and the perfect stage, uh, as I told you, the true state, that is the sexual state is also there, but that we do not show you in our lactobinal cotton mounds. So uh, different species are also reported in India. So a different uh, range of enzymes are used for industrial fermentation are also there. So they decay tobacco and cigar and spoil nuts, bread, etc. So this is the mycelium on which basically what we see is this uh, asexual state that is the conidiophore which carries the conidia. And this is the sexual state actually the Christothecium, the archicarp, etc that we uh, just for theoretical purposes i am telling you so this is uh, the basically the foot cell on from which the conidiophore arises the conidiophore will have the vesicle and from the vesicle the uh, uh, phyalides of the steric matter will arise and then from that the conidia will arise so uh, this is what you see so these are the phyalides this is the conidiophore this is the vesicle and these are the conidia. So uh, length of the conidiophores is around 2.5 millimeters. It swells at the tip and forms a globose structures known as the vesicle. And the lumen of the vesicle is continuous with the upper part of the conidiophores. And uh, from the surface of the vesicle, tubular cells grow outwards called the steric matter or the phyalides. And these phyalides cover the whole surface of the vesicle in uh, certain species like Aspergillus uh, niger. So this is uh, Aspergillus fumigatus, you can see in the lactophenol cotton bloom out. So different, depending on the uh, color of the conidia, we can differentiate among the colonies. So fumigatus is the second most uh, common opportunistic fungal infection after candida. And it is a, a common agent of aspergillosis in both man and animals. So this is niger. I hope you can remember niger is black. So on lactophenol cotton blue mount also, we can see the blackish color. So the, this is the, uh, uh, you can see very clearly it is visible. Okay. So sometimes uh, apart from the phyalides, there are some structures known as the medulla. So the, on top of the medulla, the phyalides will be present. And on top of that, the conidia will be present. So these are the hyphae versus the conidia. So you can see very clearly the septate hyphae at typical 45 degree angle. So typically at 45 degree angle, you can see uh, in an acute angle, these will be present. So uh, the septate hyphae, and these are the conidiophores with the conidia. So invasive as well as chronic aspergillosis will be there that we have already discussed. So these fungal conidia are formed in uh, abundance. These are aerosolized, they reach the lungs and in immunocompromised like uh, people with leukemia, stem cell transplants or corticosteroids, etc. So macrophages cannot contain the inoculum and they will germinate, these uh, conidia will germinate to form the hyphae in the cavities. 
So allergic forms like uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is seen in which fungal balls are formed. So uh, aspergilloma and uh, extrapulmonary colonization can also be there. These can be inhaled to enter an existing cavity like a tubercular cavity, and these can be asymptomatic or can produce cough, dyspnea, hemoptysis, etc. So this is in the air sac of a hen. You can see very clearly uh, growth of aspergillus. So um, this is how fungal balls are produced. So asthma or recurrent, recurrent chest infiltrates, eosinophilia and hypersensitivity reactions are produced and extrinsic allergic alveolitis in which normal individuals with massive conidial exposure it will be produced. So this is in lung tissue. You can very clearly see the conidial heads also in the uh, alveolus. So invasive aspergillosis in which uh, the, the people like uh, who are having AIDS with CD4 counts less than 50 cells per millimeter cube. So these uh, people may uh, be having leukemia or, or corticosteroid therapy. So this is a very common uh, opportunistic infection. So this is an aspergilloma found at the postmortem in the lung of a child. So how do we diagnose? So we do a LP, LPCB uh, wet mount. Uh, from specimens like exudates or like sputum. So lung biopsy or respiratory tract specimens, we do a KOH mount or calcofloor stain or a histological uh, stainings on which we see the uh, aspergillus species. And then we can culture them also. And culture, uh, the growth is usually rapid in which maturation is within three days. And then we can uh, identify based on colony morphology. So Aspergillus niger, I hope you remember, these are black in color. This is the tube that we have in our laboratory. So this is black in color, tube the color of the conidia. This is flavus. So flavus is yellowish green in color. So uh, this is Aspergillus flavus, very easily you can distinguish. And this is fumigatus, it is smoky green in color. So you can very easily distinguish. I'll just show you, this is niger. This is niger, it is black in color. This flavus is smoky, uh, that is, uh, sorry, it is yellowish green in color, whereas fumigatus is smoky green in color. This is a little darker green from which you can very easily distinguish. So it is like a brownish green color. So based on the uh, structure of the colonies, you can easily distinguish between them. So these are septate hyphae in which the conidiophore arises from the food cells that we have already discussed. So Uniseriate and biseriate uh, phialides can be present. That is, if the medulla is present, it is known as biseriate. So, based on the macroscopic uh, morphology, you can very easily distinguish between the three species. So, fumigatus, niger, and flavus. So, these are velvety or powdery and at first white, then they turn into dark greenish to gray uh, with a narrow white border. So reverse is white to tan. So this is this is woolly. The niger is woolly, and first it is whitish, then it turns to yellow, then turns black. So whereas this one is yellow to green in color, and you can very easily distinguish between them. So this is how it will look. So fumigatus, as I told you, they will not cover the entire surface of the vesicle, whereas in niger and flavus, it will cover the entire surface of the vesicle. The conidia will be covering the entire surface of the vesicle so you can very easily distinguish between fumigatus and niger and flavus. Niger based on the color itself you can distinguish very easily. So the, this is just because uh, you, you may have some confusion. So fumigatus and flavus you can very easily distinguish. This uh, flavus will be yellowish. Maybe it is not that much apparent in this picture but it will be slightly yellowish whereas fumigatus will be uh, slightly greenish brown. So you can distinguish between them. So we'll see a short video on uh, candidiasis again. This is another video after which we can. Uh... Today's topic is candidiasis. Candidiasis is a yeast infection brought about by the fungus candida that lives in the human body. Over 20 different candida can cause infection, but the most common is the candida albicans. This fungus is present in small amounts in our body without causing harm. They can be in places like our mouth and belly, on the skin, and in case of women, in the vagina. In a suitable environment, the yeast can outgrow and multiply uncontrollably. 
possibility of causing pain and inflammation. There are different types of candidiasis. The spread of the candida yeast in the mouth and throat leads to a condition called thrush or oropharyngeal candidiasis. It is the most common fungal infection of the mouth. It is prevalent in people with weak immune systems. Conditions that lead to a weak immune system are diabetes, cancer, HIV, and AIDS. When the yeast spreads in the genitals, it is referred to as a genital yeast infection. Women are more affected by the genital yeast infection than men. The genital yeast infection affects three out of four adult women. When the yeast enters the bloodstream and spreads to other parts of the body, such as the kidney, spleen, bones, muscles, joints, or eyes, it is called invasive candidiasis. Causes. A number of factors can increase the possibilities of yeast growing out of proportion. They are overuse of antibiotics, obesity, pregnancy, stress, diabetes, nutrient deficiency, cancer treatment, HIV or AIDS, hormone replacement therapy, infertility treatments, lack of sleep. Symptoms. Symptoms of thrush include redness or soreness in the mouth and throat, cracking at the corners of the mouth, pain when swallowing, white or yellow patches on the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and inner cheek. Symptoms of genital yeast infection, extreme itchiness in the vagina, discomfort during sex, pain and burning during urination, rash, a thick, white, odorless, cottage cheese-like discharge. In men, the tip of the penis may be red, swollen, and painful. Diagnosis. Your doctor may review your medical history and ask questions about recent diet and medications that may weaken your immune system. The diagnosis usually depends on skin sampling. Skin scrapings from the affected area are taken and mounted on a slide for examination. Once candidiasis confirmed, the underlying cause is addressed. This may include managing your weight if you are overweight, managing your diabetes if you suffer from it, or living a hygienic lifestyle. A pelvic examination may be required where the doctor examines your vaginal walls and cervix and also looks at the surrounding areas for signs of external infection. Treatment. Antifungal medications are used in treating candidiasis. The types of antifungal medications used are chlorotrimazole, Nystatin, Gluconazole, Oriconazole. For vaginal yeast, antifungal medications may be administered either directly into the vagina as creams, ointments, or administered by mouth. For infection caused by pregnancy, topical imidazole or triazole are recommended. For oral thrush, an antifungal suspension is squished in the mouth and swallowed. In candida infection of the blood, amphotericin B or echidocandin, such as caspical fungi, may be administered. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our okay. So I hope you understood about the slides. Uh, you are sure about identifying them. Uh, if you have any issues, please uh, contact. I'll be sending the pics and the charts and uh, please uh, write down those in your uh, practical notebooks and draw the diagrams and uh, hope you have a good day. Take care of yourselves and your families. Thank you.